Hey, babies. Hey, babies. Little mama. I got the baby munch in here with me right now. Give a mom a break for a little bit. Um, but I figured out the videos, guys. So I figured out the video and the audio. Duke, will you leave alone? I figured out the video. I figured out the audio. This part does not have audio. You're going to see the audio difference in the next clip. Drop in the comments if you guys enjoy the new audio. I worked really hard on it. I think it came out okay. So we're going to see. But let me know. I also wanted to preface this video by letting everybody know. I say you guys a lot in this video. And I'm not referring to you guys as my viewers. I'm referring to you guys as people in the industry. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about once we get into the video and get into the whole shenanigans. But it's not you guys, my viewers. It's the royal you guys, meaning pretty much all the people out there that did the things that you're about to hear. All right, let's get started. Bam. Mother, can you hear me? Father, can you hear me? Maybe we got the bird hooing in the background too. He's probably <sighs> definitely the lemurs. All right, dudes and dudettes. So we're gonna try this one more time, which is good timing too, because homie here has to eat. I got the magic black box here. We're gonna be talking about venomous snake bites today. So this is gonna be part of the bite series. I already did this before, working out the kinks of this audio, so we'll see how everything works out. Before we get started, a couple of updates, ladies and gentlemen. We're pretty much done with the castle of the homies, so we're gonna be doing that next. I think we're gonna do an update on them. The cage has already been built, stuff has already been put in there, but I built him a nice little house and we got the safety entrance, we got everything going on. So we're gonna do an update on the homies soon. Um, aside from that, Patreon link is working, ladies and gentlemen. So if you go into the description, description, if you go there, you'll see the hyperlink. It'll bring you right to where you need to go. A couple of people had reached out. They're having problems finding me on Patreon. So we finally got that link uh, figured out, along with the Facebook link. If you want daily content, fly over to the Facebook. And you can hyperlink that, go right it over to Justin James Agolata on Facebook. We do something every single day on there. The Patreon as well, we've been growing. We found out we have new eligibility, so we've been able to post exclusive content. And then we play games on there. People win prizes. We send things out. You get your perks. The tiers are going to change up a bit in the next couple of weeks. But pretty much what you see is what you get with like minus a few things. Um, but there's going to be... Zoom meetings, basically live chats with all of us on there if everybody wants to get on there. That way I could see people face to face and start learning faces as opposed to just names. So we're really trying to bump up the Patreon and stuff. So there's that. And then I just want to give a quick thanks to everybody that supports. That's everybody that's on Patreon. Thank you guys very much. Everybody that supports the YouTube, the Facebook, everything that you guys do is phenomenal. I also want to give a couple of shout outs to Katie, D. You guys have been helping tremendously. And I can't even express how much these guys help me out. Um, they're special people that just do a whole lot to try and bump us up and keep us moving forward, uh, especially while we're building out the park and we have all this work to do. Also want to give a shout out to this guy right here, Smitty Serpents. So between D and Mr. Smitty Serpents, who by the way, check him out on Instagram, this Smitty Serpents on Instagram. He's been breeding ball pythons since like 2019, so support your small businesses. You want some ball pythons, go to my boy Smitty over there. He actually provided the mic that I'm using right now. And D has provided, shoot, we have a ton of mics. And I'm gonna try and make this a short one, but we got a whole desk full of goodies. I got tripods, I got doohickeys. I don't even know what the doohickey is, but I know we can hold the phone with that and we can even press buttons and stuff. I got long mics, I got other mics, so we're gonna have Mics for the lives, I got more wireless. I got all kinds, of, everything I could possibly need for this process. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting in every way that you guys do. Even the, even the guys out there that are just watching the videos, you guys have no idea how much it is. Just to press the like button or share with your friends, especially your grandmas, you know I love grandmas out there. All of that helps and it helps me keep doing this. Um, because it is time consuming, it is a lot, especially with everything we have going on, but I enjoy it. I like teaching and that's what we're about to do right now. We're going to get into something 
in light of Chandler's bite. Now you'll notice that I didn't put Chandler's wildlife bitten by this, that, and the other, like all these other people did, because it was pretty upsetting how um, the community took everything that happened. Chandler's been my buddy since he was a young kid. I've known him since he was 10 or 11. So he's like a little brother to me. We grew up together doing this together. And um, a lot of people know, and if you don't know who Chandler is, check him out on Chandler's Wildlife. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. He's been doing this for a long time. And then recently he was in India and he was bit by a Naja Naja, which is the spectacle cobra. And this is Naja Kauthia, which is the monocle cobra. So similar species and the range of this guy right here, the monocle cobra, is gonna be pretty much all of Southeast Asia, all the way into Southern uh, Asia. Cambodia, Vietnam, they're often find in the, uh, found in the rice paddies. These guys do a lot of damage as far as bites because of where they hang out and people are often working in close proximity to these snakes right here. So the monocle cobra, obviously named for the circle on its back and it's in, in its defensive posture. I'll get him to face this way real quick here. Beep, 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 boop. You see that circle right on his back there. That's why they call him the monocle cobra. And basically the cobra's defensive posture is to fan out the ribs and they stand themselves up, makes them look bigger. And then that circle on the back is meant for if anything is approaching from behind, it looks like there's a giant eyeball. Same with the spectacle cobra has two, sometimes with a little smiley face in between, but it makes it look like there's two eyes staring back. So he's kind of protecting his back end and his front end. Now the cobra, when they're hooded up, unlike the king cobras, when they strike, these guys usually don't go a long distance, uh, like let's say a rattlesnake. If I was this close to a rattlesnake and he decides to strike, especially with the speed that the rattlesnake has, I'm not gonna get out of the way in time. With the little cobra, if he strikes, he's gonna strike downwards because he's putting himself at a little bit of a disadvantage being hooded up like that. They're gonna strike in a downward position, but that doesn't make any of this safe. You see that downward position there? He doesn't move very far versus a rattlesnake that can literally sling themselves quite frequently, not frequently, but I think the word I was looking for was quite literally fling themselves using their tails, especially if they're bounced, like backed up against something, they can throw themselves at you. So they can strike a third of their body length. So these guys' distances don't go as far, but still an extremely dangerous snake. The biggest thing that you need to know when dealing with venomous snakes, and we're gonna get back to the Chandler's bite here in a second and why I'm doing this video, but the biggest thing you have to know about all venomous snakes is what kind of venom are you working with? What kind of toxins do they have? If you do the research on these guys, it's very interesting what goes into the venoms, what they do, and this is a predominant neurotoxin, which most of your lapids are gonna give you. A lapids being crates, cobras, coral snakes, things like that are gonna give you a predominant neurotoxin. That neurotoxin basically shuts down, and there's a couple of different kinds, but the, it basically shuts down um, your brain synapses, so it's not telling your muscles what to do in layman's terms. If I were to explain this to you in scientific terms, chances are I would get lost, this video would be an hour long, and most of you guys wouldn't get it, but if you wanna research it, it's fairly interesting stuff. But this guy would basically shut you down. So even this small little guy right here, although not the most potent venom, still a dangerous bite as a small guy. Now I was bitten by a large adult monocle cobra, and this was probably 13, 14 years ago, and I've been bit by three venomous snakes, copperheads, uh, a copperhead, a small one, um, an adult monocle cobra, and an adult bush viper, which I was lucky that it was a dry bite because there is no anti-venom for the bush viper itself. They do have other venoms that technically could work, but usually what they'll do is blood transfusions to try and get that out of you. It's a really miserable, miserable thing, and it was terrifying. And that's the biggest thing about any venomous snake bite is everybody knows I've been bit by gators, it shows. Literally, you're looking at this video and half my body is in parts because of the alligator bites. But at least with the alligator bites, as soon as it happens, I know where I'm at, I know what's happening. This was the worst one, obviously, so we were worried about this because of all the major arteries severed. However, with a snake bite, it's a little bit different. You don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know how much venom you got. You don't know how bad it's gonna be. You don't know how your body's gonna react, and you don't know how you're gonna react to the anti-venom itself. You can get serum sickness, and then you're dealing with two different things. You're dealing with the venom that's in 
your body, and then you're also dealing with the allergic reaction from the anti-venin itself. They used to do a lot of the anti-venins with the, the horse, now it was, so it was all equine. Now they do it with ovine, which seems to work a little bit better as far as people. Look how beautiful he's standing up. Mm -hmm. He's a good boy. So with the ovine, the sheep, it seems to work a little bit better as far as suppressing some of that um, allergic reaction that most people were getting to the equine stuff. They still do make equine stuff. And our stuff that we use here for the snakes that we have in Florida, aside from the coral snake, is gonna be Crofab, but there is another venom that is, or anti-venom that is made in Mexico that can neutralize bites from stuff that we have here, like the cottonmouth, northern copperhead, things like that. So there are certain anti-venoms that can be used. The Crofab is FDA approved and i'm not going to go into the whole speech of how the anti-venins themselves work but we will do an episode on anti-venins i have a book that i'll show you as soon as i put this guy away and you can you can get fairly close to the snake or zoom in and kind of just no, well here. just kind of deal with the snake i'll get low so we can talk and deal with the snake at the same time all right so later on uh, when I put the snake away, I'll show you the book and then we'll do another episode and we'll go really into anti-venoms, venoms, different kinds of venoms, what they can hold. And especially when you're dealing with these snakes, that's why it's important because just because it's a predominant neurotoxin doesn't mean these guys don't have other toxins as well. Some ca carry myotoxins, some carry cytotoxins, some carry cardiotoxins. Like you can go through the gamut and some snakes will hold multiple different types of toxins. When I was bit by a large one of these, I had one fang that went into the tip of my finger. So I got a mild envenomation. It wasn't extremely bad, but it was extremely terrifying because like I said, you don't know what's gonna happen. So you have time to think. You have time to call your family. So think about this with Chandler too because he got a really bad bite. You got time and I got a phone call at 4 a.m. in the morning our time when Chandler was bit and uh, I got on the phone with him and it's really scary, not just for him, but for us as well. We don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. So when I'm making my phone calls, when I got bit by the big monocle cobra, obviously my family is terrified because I don't know what's gonna happen. They don't know what's gonna happen. So it affects us and it affects the people around us. But when I got bit by the big guy with the one thing sneaking in, I was in the hospital and then we call Venom 1 and Poison Control. We go through the whole gambit and um, I ended up in the hospital for a couple of days and I received probably five or six doses of, or vials of antivenin, which is not very much. What we were worried about was more the secondary effects. It had been like an hour and a half and there was no facial paralysis, no paralysis going on, but we were worried about secondary effects, which could be renal failure. So with these guys here, it could break down uh, muscle tissue in such a, a way that you wouldn't even realize it, and then you go to sleep, and then you die in your sleep because your kidneys can't process all of that. So you can go into renal failure and you can die. That was the biggest worry with my bite. I was lucky. We'll talk about the copperhead bite in another episode when I get a copperhead, and that bite was a lot different dealing with a different kind of toxin and also a very, very strong bite. So with the Cobra, uh, these guys will shut down the synapses, like I said, and what happens is your body starts to go into, you know, you're getting paralyzed. The first facial paralysis will set in, your face kind of sags, then you can't talk, and then what happens is your lungs shut down and you're dying from respiratory failure. That's why oftentimes when people get bit by these things, people are intubated almost immediately, especially if it's a really bad bite, to keep that person breathing, i.e. when when uh, Tyler got bit by the big King Cobra, he was intubated and he was in and out of it for quite some time and received a lot of vials of anti-venom. Now, for me, it wasn't as extreme with the Cobra. Um, it was very terrifying. I did make the phone calls to my family. We did not know whether or not I was gonna be okay, and that is the looming sense of fear whenever something like that happens. And like I said, knock on wood, I have not been bit in over 13 years, and I don't plan to ever experience it again. However, one never knows. Now, the risks of dealing with any venomous snake, whether you have tools or not, are always there. We always hear the same things. Anybody that free handles, oh my God, you're gonna ruin the hobby, you're gonna ruin the industry, it becomes a selfish thing and that's what happened with Chandler. So when Chandler got bit, it was filmed, I didn't catch my bites on film, but when Chandler got bit, it was a very serious bite. We were worried for his life, as was his family, as was he. When other people out there used it as a way to boost their platform, 
boost their YouTube, and talk a bunch of smack about Chandler because it's the first chance that people got because it's the first mistake that he made. Now, I've made more mistakes than most people in my industry. That's why I got the name Bite Force. Getting a bite does not make you cool. Getting a bite is a failure at what we do, but we are human beings. We do make mistakes, or mistakes. We do, we do make mistakes. So we do make mistakes as you clearly just heard me make a mistake there. So we're only human, ladies and gentlemen, but what we do, we do not recommend anybody else does. Use your tools. However, just because you use your tools doesn't mean you're safe. There are people out there that don't go through a mentorship. There are states out there where you don't have to have hours. Here in the state of Florida, we're the highly regulated state, or regulated state, highest regulated, damn, I can't speak today. Highest regulated state when it comes to owning exotic animals, especially venomous. We have to have a thousand hours with somebody with a permit. So we go through the mentorship and I learned all the safety stuff before I ever put hands on a snake. So years and years before I ever put hands on a snake and then we morph that into something else. And why we do what we do is very simple. I can put a snake down on the floor and if it's just slithering and I'm talking about it, Nobody really gets that excited, but when we did the shows and we do the free handling, people pay a lot more attention. So Chandler has reached millions upon millions of people with his videos, alleviating some of the fear that people have for snakes, getting a little bit more understanding for the snakes themselves. And if I had a dollar for every time I heard somebody say a good snake is a dead snake and they change their mind because of our shows or because of Chandler's uh, YouTube channel, then I'd never have to work again. I'd never have to work again. So we got a lot more more out of people doing this dangerous stuff and also showing off what the animals can do. Because if this guy was just sitting like a noodle, it'd be a little bit different, but he's poised, he's up, he's gorgeous, he's beautiful. And then when you have him in your face, it's a whole different thing. So you're grabbing people's attention, putting them on the edge of, or at the edge of their seat. And yes, it is dangerous. We don't recommend anybody do it, but it also reaches a lot of people. So it's basically to each his own. We don't want anybody replicating what we do. That's not what we ask for. That's why the warning signs are put up. That's why all the warnings are put up before any one of my videos or any one of Chandler's videos. We don't want people replicating this. We want you to use your tools, but we also want you to understand that if you don't learn correctly, then your tools are not gonna save you. Uh, and you're worse off not knowing how to use the tools than you are picking up a snake by the tail. Because what ends up happening is if you have a hook too far high, that snake can slide back, whack you in the stomach, face, hand, whatever it may be, and a well-placed bite can put you in the earth pretty quickly. It hits an artery or something like that, and you're in danger very quickly, more so than if you get bit like on a lower extremity where you have little capillaries and stuff. But if they sneak one into a vein or if they sneak one into an artery, you're pretty screwed pretty quickly. So, and a lot of times, even with me in my Cobra bite, it was when I was using tools. So the free handling has never gotten me bit. It was the tools that got me bit, uh, trying to deal with something that I should have probably dealt with a little bit differently. And it was in the beginning stages, but I do not condone the free handling. I do with my buddies and I do with myself, but that's my risk to take. It's my life, I live my life, and I'm gonna do what I know keeps me safe. So if I listen to everybody else, especially when they say you're ruining the hobby or you're ruining this, that, or the other, well, this isn't a hobby for us, it's our entire life. We have sp spent literally our entire lives dealing with these animals and doing everything we can to protect the wildlife around us and educate as many people as we possibly can. It's just a passion that we have and we're allowed to have that passion. So when Chandler got bit and you see people trying to monetize it, that's why, again, I didn't put Chandler's bite. Let's talk about it because I'm not going to drag people to my channel or channel or drag people to see, you know, Chandler's bite type of deal to try and monetize my friend's terrible experience where he could have lost his life. I am trying to point out more that I have made those mistakes. I have been bit many a times more so than anybody else. And it's not something to be proud of, but it is something to explain. We're not affecting the hobby. We're not affecting the community. We follow the laws more than pretty much anybody else in any other state because a lot of other states don't have the same laws that we have. We don't do anything illegal. 
we make sure that we do all of our paperwork we make sure that we have all of our stuff in tune we spend tons of money to keep these animals the way they're supposed to be kept so that we don't affect anybody else if we get bit that's on us that affects us our immediate family and our immediate friends it does not affect the community it does not affect the hobby in any way shape or form point being search up grace wiley Search that, that woman up right there. The first person I ever captively breed crotalids. Search Bill Haas, George Van Horn, Ross Allen. These guys that had to do hands-on work and people that still to this day like George Van Horn do the work to milk these snakes and get the anti-venom out and also all the medicinal purposes that can go into this stuff. This cobra venom that he has could be a cure for cancer. They do studies on that stuff. It could be a cure for chronic pain, which we have an opioid epidemic here in the United States. So if if we could get something like this where it's non-addictive and it's something that's going to take care of that pain because of the natural uh, properties that it has as a painkiller unless you get a really bad bite but in low dosages like I had my bite no pain no nothing but just mild effects but that's because it was a mild envenomation but localized I was pretty numb and uh, no damage a big bite you can get some necrosis on the tissue you can lose a finger obviously and bad things can happen and then the more venom you got the more in trouble you are but to take that and start beating up on a person or try to use it to monetize and make money off of somebody else's misfortune, that's what's wrong with the hobby. That's what's wrong with the community. It's not people doing what we do. We've been doing this forever, long before anybody was ever watching. This wasn't for clickbait. Chandler didn't start this stuff on YouTube or anything like that. He started this stuff at my house when he was just a young kid. We did this stuff back in the day when we were allowed to take the, the non- native venomous outside we did this stuff in the backyard so that he can learn the behavior of these animals so that he can learn how to work these animals so he could keep himself safe the same way that i did so we didn't do it to put it out on facebook we didn't do it to put it out on youtube but we realized that in doing so we get a lot more attention to the animals themselves it's not about us it's the animals so to see the community make all the memes that they made and to see them try and ch tear chandler down when we didn't even know if he was going to be all right or not that's the problem with the community because if you really search the word community what is community community is supposed to be a bunch of people that are together with the same uh same train of thought the same path the same process and whether you're just a hobbyist that likes to keep a couple of animals or whether you're in the industry or whether you're a zookeeper or a zoo owner or whether you're an AZA or a ZAA or just a wildlife park or a wildlife sanctuary we all have our place and we all do our things I equate it to this I go in with my monkeys every single day. Romeo could kill me at any point. He's got an inch and a half canine on either side and he could, and he's gonna aim for the neck and the face. And all he has to do is get one well-placed bite to my carotid artery and I'm gonna die. If he hits me in the jugular, I could die. That's a real prop, I mean, it's a, it's a real, situation that could happen now granted i spend a lot of time with my animals and i do a lot on the behavior so i watch the behavior of every animal so i know if it's time to get out or not so we tend to keep that on the lower side but if i go in with romeo and juliet or i go in with a tiger or i'm holding a bear or go in with a big bear just like my buddy dexter he's in there with his bears every single day but nobody ever says hey you're free handling that bear you're going to ruin the industry we have more oversight than most people on this planet. We have inspectors that come, we have state and federal licenses that we have to carry to be able to do these things and we follow all of these laws. But nobody ever says, hey Justin, you're free handling that bear, you're gonna ruin the hobby. And it's a really selfish thing to say, especially when Chandler got bit because him being in the situation he was in and the bite that he got, um, it was a mistake that anybody could have made. Period, end of story, a mistake that I have made myself over and over again and with that being said to go and attack that and to basically try and tear him down or make money off of his bad experience that is what i see as being a problem not what chandler was doing chandler's doing what he's always done way before the camera was ever on him i'm doing what i've always done way before the cameras were ever even on me this is all about education and we can do things our way and you guys can do things your way 
the goal would be to get everybody on the same page and instead of tearing everybody down and not just with us free handling i see it on all the forums you get somebody that just starts keeping animals they post up a picture they ask for help and instead of getting help they get berated by hundreds of people talking all kinds of trash to them just because they're not doing it their way or maybe it's not correct but instead of helping them they just bash them and say you shouldn't have this you should have done this you should have done that and i do believe in doing plenty of research before you get an animal but if somebody doesn't and they're asking for help give them the help build them up that is community not tearing people down for what they do and how they do it there's a thousand different ways i can take care of this snake right now there's a thousand different ways i can set him up for him to be healthy and there's no reason to tear anybody down for anything they do. If it's not what you do, and again, we don't recommend it, it's not what you do. And that's perfectly fine. Use your tools, use your safety at your discretion. Be safe with your animals 100%. We don't wanna see anybody hurt, but good Lord. You guys gotta back off and you guys gotta learn to love one another a little bit more. Otherwise we will not have a community. And when bad things happen and law changes come, they're gonna change because we don't have that community. We have a very small community that tries to deal with the law side of things and most of them don't even get inspected. They don't even know what goes into the permits with FWC here in Florida. And then the side of us that do, that have multiple permits, like I have my permits for class one big cats, class one bears, class two cats, class one crocs, class two crocs, the venomous, the all, a, bunch of, a bunch of permits all in between. And um, I worked, thousands upon thousands of hours for years and years and years to follow my dream and i should be allowed to do that the way that i want to as long as it's within the law when the laws changed for the venomous and we had to do double door entries i didn't agree with it i didn't lose a snake the guy mike kennedy up north did twice he lost the king cobra he should have been punished right well we were all pretty much punished because we had to change what we did we can't bring non-venomous outside anymore which is fine. We have to do the double door entry. We have to do the escape proof room, the whole nine yards. And guess what? I agree with all of it. I didn't complain. I just changed what I did because the laws changed because somebody else did something stupid and lost the animal. But I do believe that all precautions should be going into keeping something as dangerous as this snake right here, even this little tiny guy. We take extra precautions to make sure. I have kids, we have neighbors, we have animals. We don't want anybody getting hurt. But that's the biggest takeaway from this video, my friends. Like, do things the way that you wanna do them. Use tools when you wanna use your tools. Well, I'm not gonna say when you wanna use your tools. Use tools all the time. Use your tools. Handle the snakes that you wanna handle. If you're not into venomous, don't get venomous. If you're uncomfortable with it and uncomfortable with getting bit by any snake at all, then definitely venomous is not for you. But having said that, I will say that if I choose to pick a snake up with my bare hands because I think that it's either gonna keep me safer or keep the snake a little bit more comfortable, then that's my choice, not anybody else's choice. I'm not putting anybody else in danger but myself. I'm not putting the hobby in danger. I'm not putting your uh, industry stuff in danger. You could still sell your animals. You could still breed your snakes. You could still do whatever it is you need to do. I just do things a little bit differently. That's it. That's all there is to it. So it's basically an understanding of behavior of these animals and trying to get them calm and handling them in a way with respect to the animals and respect to myself as well as respect to everybody else around me. So just because somebody doesn't do things the same way that I do, I don't get on anybody's case. As long as the animals are well cared for and that's the main purpose, then I'm totally cool with everything. And that is all I wanna say about the subject. So in the end, in conclusion, yes, venomous snake bites are terrifying. I don't wish it on anybody on this earth. But if it happens to anybody, you better believe I'm not gonna be knocking at your door or knocking down at your page to try and make fun of you or try and make a bad situation worse. I'm gonna make sure that you're okay and then I'm gonna make sure that the snake is okay and then we're gonna move forward and that's it because that is what community does. All right, my friends, let's get this little guy up. We'll put him in his little box here and then back into his enclosure he will go because it's feeding time, but that's it. That's all I wanted to say, my friends. It's a different kind of video, but I kind of feel like it needed to be said, it needed to be put out there, and, and maybe to, you know, everybody might not agree. And I appreciate a healthy debate, 
but trash talking is not the way to deal with certain things. The best way to deal with things is to talk about it, have the healthy debate, and then spread it across the board so that everybody is on the same page and everybody could be doing the same thing. We're supposed to have the same goal, and the goal is supposed to be the animals, period, end of story. I don't get on people's cases when they inbreed a snake 87,000 times, even though I don't agree with it, I don't get on that person's case. I don't post about it. I don't make, uh, you know, it's not my deal to make drama. I want less drama in my life. And I worked very, very hard to do what I do. Chandler worked very, very hard to do what he does. We all work very hard to do what we do. And this is our entire life. This is all this world for me. Chandler is young. He could pretty much do whatever he wanted, but I'm 36 years old. I'm not going to be doing anything different now. I do construction in my house and I have half a body. It hurts. I'm not going to lie. There's, you know, it's painful to go through projects the way that I do. Um, but I do it. I do it by myself. But could I do that full time, 24 seven, every single day? Probably not. I've beat myself up, but those are the risks that I took. Those are the things that happened to me. And for the 20 years that I've been doing it by myself and for the years before that, that I was doing it with my father and other people, guess what? Nothing ever changed in the industry because of anything that happened to me. And look at me, my friends, I'm missing half of my body. I got my lips opened up. My nose has been sliced open. I got scars all over my face. There's a hole in my ear that goes straight into the back of my head. I've had my skull crushed. I've had my finger removed. I've had my bicep removed. If you look at my hands, I have no knuckles left. They've all been broken multiple times. Every single scar that you see there and fresh scratches all over from all different kinds of animals all over the place. And then if you look real close, there are scars that go all the way through the here fingernail. from flowing up. There's a new bite that was, you know, a couple months ago from an alligator that chunked down my cuticle, nails growing in. You have all of these scars here, these scars here, every little single dot that you see is another big alligator bite. I've had my thumb almost removed all the way off. You'll see the stitch marks there. And then that comes all the way back around. I've had my palm opened all the way up. I've had my arm ruined. There's other gator bites in between that. There's the first gator bite that I got that's kind of going away right there. I've been through the ringer, ladies and gentlemen, but I did what I did. I do what I do because I love the animals. I have the passion for it and I continue to do it. It's no different than somebody that races motorcycles or jumps out of a plane. That's what they enjoy doing, but you can die doing that. But if I go out doing what I love, then at least I go out doing what I loved. However, I'm not going to go out picking on every person in the industry. I'm not going to go out talking smack about people in the industry. That's just not my game. I'd rather go to sleep at night knowing that every single day I try to be a better person rather than going to sleep every single night stressed because of what I said on Facebook, because of what I said on YouTube, because of what I said about this guy, because of what I said about that guy. It's just not worth it. You want to talk about community? Make one. Boom.